Hello and welcome to Scoop Talk. I'm Ryan Karchi. Here's Lynn Hauser. He's uh, he's taking Dustin's place today. Unfortunately, Dustin was up at the wreckage in East Lansing. How fun afternoon. was that? So we know he's having a blast. He's on his way back. But for now, uh, we're here to talk about a pretty impressive victory when when all was said and done. Eventually, Indiana ended up winning 94 to 65, a 29 point win. It's only the first. It's the first time since 1938 that they've started off the season four game four games four wins all by 20 points or more so that being said pretty impressive but they really didn't get off to a very good start I mean they started I think three of ten from the floor they were tied 14 14 but but from there they really kicked it into gear I mean, yeah I mean uh, uh, part of what the, the way the game two things the way the game was officiated and the mm -hmm. way uh, Savannah State played but actually mm -hmm. both teams both teams were taking the ball to baskets and mm -hmm. both defenses were challenging every shot so mm -hmm. it was a total foul fest like we got to be honest it was pretty to watch and it was kind of tedious at times but from 14 to 14 Indiana went on a 13-0 run and I loved the last four points of that mm -hmm. run where uh, on this end of the floor Cody Zeller comes out he's on the floor gets a loose ball that starts a break mm -hmm. and on the delayed break he's there to take the pass gets a foul that turned out to be mm -hmm. an intentional foul, makes the two free throws on the ensuing possession. He scores again, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, those, things like that, those those little intangibles they talk about, they, they really are the kind of things that, again, took a a, a, a fairly close game, first half, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. any has up double figures, the crowd's into it, and uh, really it was, they were off to the races. I think, I think Zeller, more than anything, and just to kind of add on, to show you how much of a foul fest this was, we had 53 personal fouls tonight. Ah. So, lots of double bonus, lots of one and one, a little bit too many fouls in my opinion, but that's for another scoop talk. Yeah, um, it, again, uh, uh, Savannah State, obviously they were trying to spread the floor mm -hmm. and they were driving it every time. Uh, they, they didn't they didn't have a really uh, uh, established post game at mm -hmm. all. And, and the, the jury is still out on it. Indiana has a face, a, a mm -hmm. real true post player yet in four mm -hmm. games and uh, of course that's going to change here in the next couple of weeks when yeah. we're going to see some uh beginning with i think with uh with butler of course and the mm -hmm. acc challenge and you got notre dame and kentucky and then and, you got kentucky and you're going to see plenty of post players some very large game. lads there <laughs> so i know i know lynn said a little bit about cody zeller cody coming out with probably what i would say is his best performance of the year 23 points most of that came from the free throw line i mean the man was drawing fouls like crazy he, he has a way of, you know, he doesn't, he, he gathers himself mm -hmm. when he gets the ball. He doesn't just like immediately hoist it up there and see, see what's happening. He, he collects himself. Uh, you can kind of see the wheels turning. Mm -hmm. He's planning a move or something. And then, you know, he's still able to get a, a, a fairly high percentage shot, draws the foul, or makes the basket. I think we'll see him end up as one of the more cerebral big men in the Big Ten. I mean, you got guys like Trevor Mbakwe or... Or Jared Sollinger, who, and although Sollinger has gotten a lot more cerebral, I mean, those guys can just use their strength to really be dominant and make post moves. Zeller's kind of, like you said, he's 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 really got the wheels turning there when he's he's making those shots. So he also ended up with five rebounds, which I I think was tied for the team lead. And, and 11 oh, no, deflections on defense. Now, those aren't steals, but... <laughs> Coaches like those better than steals because Coach Green he, loves the deflections. Right, because yeah. usually it leads to somebody else getting the steal or uh, a held ball or or, some, or or just just combobulates the other team's mm -hmm. offense. So he had 11 deflections. I, I think that's big. Uh, I like the fact that Indiana had 16 assists tonight mm -hmm. uh, on 28 baskets. 16 uh, assists to only nine turnovers. That's, yeah. Of of anything, that's the most in, most important statistic. And and looking at the other side, I mean, you can just see. The difference in talent, the difference in, in a team that really knows how to play basketball. Savannah State, five assists the entire time, 16 turnovers. And Indiana converted those uh, turnovers into 27 points off of turnovers. So, exactly, which uh, they've been doing really impressively this year so far. Yeah, I also liked what I saw on a Christian Watts for tonight. Mm -hmm. He looks like he's he's or at least close to healthy. I know he had that sore Achilles. Glad to see I mean, his movement's a lot better. Mm -hmm. You can see him elevate better, yeah. uh, stop better do, do a lot of little things he just looks quicker the first game or two it looked like he had ankle weights mm -hmm. on or something and he's been shoot, he's been hitting down shots on the perimeter he had i think he had two three-pointers tonight he had other than Derek elson he was the only one to make a three-pointer i mean this that was something interesting i thought tonight is we only saw six shots from from long range they really tried to hammer it into the post and 
and it worked. I mean, you you look at the at the box score, and and Watford and Zeller had you know a third of the team's points, right? Just, and, just from the post. And just look at a box score a year ago, and, mm-hmm. and it was probably shooting, you know, probably an average of 15 threes mm-hmm. a game. You know, mm-hmm. that's at least yeah. Without really having that many good three point shooters, I mean, yeah. because they just didn't have. Uh, that they weren't able to spread defenses out or anything. They just had to sort of hoist it up there with the mm-hmm. shot clock winding down. This year they're getting much better ball movement. Mm-hmm. And, and as Tom Crean said in his press conference, they're not uh, they're not forcing things. Uh, they're not uh, hunting for shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are uh, l- shots within mm-hmm. parameters of the offense, so they look good. Sometimes they, they do have to put their head down, just go to the rim and see what happens mm-hmm. or. Like, yeah, but they only took six three-pointers. I think it's a very healthy sign. I think, I think the most important thing we can take from this game, and it's kind of what I wrote in my column, is that, is that we saw a team that was human at the beginning. We saw a team that started off 3 of 10. They started off flat. The ball movement looked bad. I mean, it was probably the worst the ball movement has been all season. But they bounced back. And, and a lot of that, and I know Coach Crean answered this a little bit in the press conference, a lot of that has to do with them gaining confidence in themselves. They're... They know they can they can see themselves shooting poorly and they can turn it around, and they can they can see how they can get back into rhythm and they get back into the rhythm. So I think I think something like that uh, a lot of that comes from not only that confidence but also also buying into what Coach Kareen is doing, especially I mean, on the defensive end. I mean, you, mm-hmm. you, you a lot of times your offense is slow out of the gate, mm-hmm. not only in the season but in in the start of games. Mm-hmm. But if your defense has been intensely up, and there were some defensive lapses too early. Definitely, and I, yeah. I, I think especially with Indi- penetration, right? Indi- it took Indiana a while to figure out uh, Savannah's speed and who mm-hmm. was fast and who was faster, even. Mm-hmm. And then, but also as Indiana's shuffling in players, they got they got a lot of depth this year. Mm-hmm. And as each one of them adjusts to Savannah's speed, it was just pretty. After a while, mm-hmm. there just weren't any more driving lanes uh, for Savannah, and so. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, that just it just extended the pull away. I mean, this is Savannah State to be to be fair, and and they're gonna see harder teams. But to just be able to see that the beginnings of being able to make mid game adjustments. I mean, I can't really speak speak to it the last few seasons because I haven't been here. But but you watched all these these seasons. Have you seen Indiana ever be able to you know change in the middle of the game and and really turn um, around or or have, has there? They've has, tried to. They just they they just didn't have the personnel. Now they've mm-hmm. got. Uh, uh, so many more options, and, and mm-hmm. it's funny how the, the presence of Zeller, and I hate to just keep <laughs> piling on bouquets for Zeller. Oh, we love piling on. But but, but the presence of him it truly does make everybody else mm-hmm. better. Not yeah. and and the fact that they are another year older and stronger, mm-hmm. and so it's just, in a way they are. There, there are just so many more options when Tom looks down on his bench and somebody's struggling or they're in foul trouble or something. Mm-hmm. They can go in and there's you're not seeing much drop off in of play mm-hmm. at all. You mm-hmm. know, so they're able to sustain that. I think they are more focused, and then Zeller allows us also allow people to mm-hmm. shift over another position or two too. So they, they they have a different look about them, even though a lot of most of the guys return. But you add one big guy, and mm-hmm. if you were going to add, you know, Tom Tom Crean's Christmas tree last year probably had you know <laughs> Cody Zeller gift wrapped under it for the following season because mm-hmm. that's exactly what they've needed. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden the the dynamics are totally different, and he's a team guy, and if, Everybody's enjoying it. Well, now we'll see when they lose a game or two how, mm. you know, how how people handle that. But uh, the, all signs are pointing to a very uh, fun season. I agree that ju- that drop off from the bench, and I know I know we've talked about it, and Coach Green has talked about it, but it just keeps showing that it's actually. I mean, we have more empirical evidence that it is actually improved. Derek Elson continues to play great. He he was four of four to start this game. He ended four of six, but. But at the same time, I mean, he he showed something. He shows he's he's aggressive on the perimeter, and and I know Coach Green was was pretty excited about how he's been playing, and I think we can see him getting 15 minutes a game from here on out, no matter what, and that's that's what he got today. We also saw Tom Pritchard get 15 minutes, and and I know he didn't really show up so much on the stat sheet, but. He actually looked a little more aggressive. And he had that uh, two-hand follow dunk. He did, dunk, he got did the have crowd a two-hand follow-up dunk. You, you so. know, the crowd wants him to succeed. You know, I mean, he's, he's a senior. You know, he's had some bumps in the road. and uh, But when he comes in and does something really positive like that, that the crowd gets excited, and uh, it's good to see. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight from uh, from Indiana's 94-65 to victory. Thanks, and we'll be back on Monday. Thanks a lot. See you.